Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I'm going to explain why global warming would produce less extreme weather. The science behind this is very simple, and I'm going to start with these coyote pups I watched grow up last summer. The parents chose a den underneath this rock in the middle of a meadow. The parents chose it because it was a stable, safe place for the pups to grow up. The same reasoning which human parents use when they choose a house to raise their children. The parents wanted a rock in the middle of the meadow rather than on the edge of a cliff. But when the coyotes grow up and they want to kill the roadrunner, they don't want a rock in the middle of a meadow. They want one on the edge of a cliff. And the reason is because work is driven by differences in energy. If the coyote is going to kill the roadrunner, he's depending on the difference in energy between the top of the cliff and the bottom of the cliff where the roadrunner is supposed to be located. The key principle being that in order to do work to this boulder, you need a difference in energy between the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill. The difference in energy between the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill is what makes it possible for the boulder to gain speed and momentum. If the boulder was sitting on flat ground, it would be impossible for the coyote to use it to kill the roadrunner. As a child, I spent a lot of time rolling boulders off of the edge of cliffs. But you can't roll a boulder off the middle of the meadow. This boulder has a lot of gravitational potential energy, but in order for me to make use of it, I need to have lower energy levels nearby at the bottom of the hill. The same principle is true with electricity. If you put your batteries in the wrong direction with positive facing positive, no electricity will flow. That's why we use batteries with a positive terminal facing the negative terminal of the next battery. The electricity flow is driven by the difference in energy between the positive terminal of this battery and the negative terminal of the next battery. This is a fundamental principle of physics, that energy flow is driven by differences in energy, not the amount of absolute energy. The same principle is true with weather. Violent storms occur when cold air meets up with warm humid air. The cold air is more dense and pushes the warm moist air upwards. This causes condensation and violent weather. A good example was Hurricane Sandy. The amount of energy released was greatly enhanced by the fact that there was a cold front coming down the east coast at the time. Let's think about where extreme weather occurs. The state of Hawaii has very warm air, but they have very little violent weather. And the reason being because cold air masses never make it to Hawaii. On the other hand, the atmosphere over the Arctic has much less absolute energy than Hawaii does, but they have much more violent weather. Violent weather is driven by differences in energy, not the absolute energy of the system. In order to produce violent weather, you have to have cold air somewhere in the system. The deadliest tornado in U.S. history occurred in March 1925. The tornado struck Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, and there were many other tornadoes around the United States that same day. Six states were affected and there were 4,000 casualties from the tornadoes. Dozens of towns were destroyed. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were less than 310 parts per million. Climate alarmists believe that we can prevent bad weather by lowering CO2 levels, but history shows us that that belief system has no basis in reality. The path of the storm is shown here across southern Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. And this was the U.S. temperature map from that same day. You can see that there was very cold air to the north and very warm air to the south. This is the classic setup for springtime tornado activity in the United States cold dry air to the north and warm humid air to the south and the tornadoes occurred right where the cold air met the warm air without the cold arctic air there would be no tornadoes now let's look at the latest version of the nasa global temperature graph this graph changes all the time but the latest version shows a hockey stick of warming since the mid 1970s and this map from nasa shows the purported temperature trend since 1974 you can see that the vast majority of the claimed warming has occurred in the Arctic. According to NASA, the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. This means that the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator has gotten much smaller over the last 45 years. The Arctic warming much faster than the tropics is an essential part of global warming theory. The principle is called Arctic amplification. According to the theory of climate alarmists, the Arctic is going to keep warming up more and more over time. This will reduce the amounts of cold air in the Arctic and reduce the difference in temperature between the Arctic and the tropics. In order to get a lot of violent weather, you would need a lot of cold air. But as global warming continued, you would have less and less cold air, which would mean that there would be necessarily less violent weather. 
The ultimate case of this is the planet Venus. It's extremely hot there, but the temperature is uniform around the entire planet, and they have no weather at all. Venus has lots of energy in their atmosphere, but they have no violent weather. Climate alarmists don't seem to understand this. They say that more energy in the atmosphere would lead to more extreme weather. But as we've just seen, there's no theoretical basis to this belief. The Little Ice Age 500 years ago was known for lots of extreme weather. At the time, lots of people blamed the extreme weather on witches. They said that they were cooking the weather. Thousands of people were burned at the stake, accused of cooking the weather. In the 16th century, climate alarmists blamed witches for the extreme weather. But climate alarmists have come a long way since the 16th century. They no longer blame witches for the bad weather. Now they blame Republicans and climate skeptics. The National Academy of Sciences says global warming is contributing to extreme weather events, and they say that's a fact. They say that global warming is causing more heat waves, droughts, and wildfires. But the data from the National Climate Assessment shows the exact opposite. We can see that heat waves are way down in the United States over the last 80 to 90 years. The EPA shows the same thing. Heat waves were much worse 80 to 90 years ago. According to NOAA, the United States has gotten wetter over time, with many fewer droughts than we had, say, in the 1930s and 1950s, which were the worst droughts in U.S. history. And according to the U.S. Forest Service, burn acreage in the United States used to be much higher prior to 60 years ago. In 1988, climate scientists made all kinds of catastrophic forecasts. They forecast a huge increase in the power of hurricanes. They said that rice production around the world would plummet. They said there would be terrible droughts and that huge areas of forests in the southern United States would be killed by the drought. But year over year, rice production continues to increase to record levels. The global tropical accumulated cyclone energy has decreased over the last 30 years. And since these global warming forecasts were made in 1988 before Congress, the U.S. has continued getting wetter, with recent years being among the wettest on record. Many climate scientists don't seem to understand the basic principles of physics. Global warming would tend to produce less extreme weather, not more. But climate alarmists know that they can receive funding for simply making up nonsensical stories about the climate. CNN reports another $10 billion headed to fix the imaginary problem which climate alarmists have created. That amount of money buys lots of really bad science and journalism. Like this story which says that Yellowstone National Park is going to be 13 degrees hotter by the year 2100. This graph shows every single daily maximum temperature record taken to Yellowstone National Park headquarters since the 1940s. The turquoise line is the trend line and it shows a very slight upwards trend over the last 80 years. But since the year 2003, Yellowstone National Park temperatures have been trending downwards. The predictions made in this article have no basis in science or in reality. I'm not going to get any of the $10 billion from the Amazon founder for telling the truth. But these people are making up ridiculous stories about the Yellowstone climate may well get a big chunk of cash. Being dishonest pays extremely well in climate science. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.